Uh, hello, welcome to uh, the Minton Free Library in Stoke, London Road, uh, Stoke upon Trent. Stoke has been one of the six towns that make up the federated city of the Potteries, or Stoke on Trent. Um, we're actually in the basement or a subground space underneath the, the Minton Library. Um, it was originally the canteen, it was a public canteen known as the canteen, and the reason, um, in, in part, why it's tiled. Um, with all these incredible tiles, more than 500 um, beautiful tiles made in the 1870s when the building was, was erected, um, was because it was a canteen, it was for hygiene, it was easy to look after and clean down. So, what is your role in all this? Uh, I'm an enthusiastic amateur that uh, cares passionately about the potteries and the city. Um, I'm interested in, particularly interested in ceramics. Tiles and the tile industry. Um, so, kind of been involved in different projects, uh, including one called the Pottery's Tile Trail, which was a, was a, just a call for everybody in the city and everybody that visits the city to keep an eye out for, for tiles and, and so called architectural ceramics that you'll find across the, the city's buildings. So, you'll, people, people will know that as a ceramic city, that Stoke on Trent is. The street signs are made of ceramic, the doors, people's doorsteps and hallways are ceramic, the civic buildings, the town halls have got great ceramics, the churches, the pubs, wherever you look you'll find an evidence of that ceramic city. So Pottery's Tile Trail was a, 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 everybody taking photographs and together we've collected this amazing online collection of where those ceramics um, still exist today, where you'll find them and see them across the city. Can you tell me a little bit about these tiles, the surroundings of this room? Yeah, the, um, the story behind the, the, this canteen space in, in, in the Minton Library. Um, I was invited, at the uh, local authority sold the building um, at the end of last year, uh, which is to, uh, 2014. Um, it was bought in a private auction. I was invited by the new owner to come and come and have a look at the tiles and the ceramics. He knows I, I'm interested and I've got some some knowledge and, and, and relative expertise about, about tiles and, and, and buildings across the city. Um, he led me down to the basement space, and I I knew from a couple of couple of, a photographer friend of mine had, had taken a photograph of a, of a couple of tiles that were exposed. Um, underneath some wallpaper in this space. Um, so I knew that there was possibility of some interesting tiles. However, I had no idea that the whole, all four walls were completely covered in more than 500 amazing historical tiles. By, it's, it's a, so they've been covered up for 50 years. Um, the space was modernised when it, was, it became a municipal library. Trying to make it modern, Victorian tiles were out of you know, out of flavour, and uh, it was. You know, they were trying to encourage people to, to come into a modern library. However, they covered up what we now can recognise as being incredibly important. This incredibly important showcase in a showcase showcase building opposite the original Mint and China Works. Um, this incredibly important showcase of 1870s tiles by, by three different um, three different artists um, that we're aware of. So there's, there's a guy called John Moyer Smith, um, who is quite well known. Um, there's another artist called C. O. Murray, um, and, a, and a final artist was a, a local local artist that came through the ranks called uh, Thomas Allen. So there's the, the main feature tiles are, are made by either Moyer Smith or these two other artists, and then there's uh, some really nice transfer prints and then geometrics as well. Um, so there, it was an amazing discovery, really. To, to, to we've we've invited the, the wider community to come and help us to, to clean up, do a remedial clean up, expose these tiles again that haven't been seen for 50 years. Um, you know, that were made in the 1870s, that were fired in the bottle kilns that used to stand up as at least two important buildings, remnant buildings of the Mint China Works, the Public Free Library, and next door the School of Art or the Herbert Minton Memorial Building. Um, and it's just been, it's been an amazingly wonderful experience along with a lot of other people to, to, you know, to, to review our city in this space. 
companies of days and times, you know, which are of international significance into internationally significant historical buildings. What, are there any plans for this building now? Like, have you got any plans or has anybody got any plans for this? Um, the, the, the new owner of the building, um, he's, uh, he, he wants it to he, it, it does, he can't lose money as a businessman that's invested in a building, but he's, a, he's a, an entrepreneur with a difference, I think it's fair to say, and certainly all I can say is from my experience, he's been very supportive of, of me doing the work, this initial remedial conservation work and survey work, if you like, for, for, for the tiles in the basement. He's encouraged, actively encouraged me to invite people into the building get people to, to use the building again. He wants it to have a community function and use, as well as private hires for things like family functions and weddings through to, to small-scale conferences. That's his idea for the, for the building. I think he'd like a, an anchor tenant, something like a community association, maybe having an office space, a meeting space in there and using it for events. The, basement, the basement's really been really interesting. We've, We've been having a conversation for the last three months. We're going to continue that conversation for the next month and a half, two, uh, two months, up until Christmas. Lots of ideas about what it could be. It could be a people's museum. It could go. It could be a canteen again. It could be an impromptu space for you know, all sorts of really exciting, creative, maybe creative heritage projects and, and activities people's archives, personal archives, these are the things that have already been happening. In terms of the, the, uh, long, the longer term longer term plans for the basement space, I think it's it's a work in progress and I just say that any, anybody that wants to join in that conversation, what might happen is I hope they come through the door over the next next four four, four to six weeks and get in, get have a conversation, come bring their ideas try and find a reuse for this space which is you know, it, it, it deserves to be open it deserves to be looked after maybe with time with the right resources uh, in the mix and the right skills in the mix we restore this space these tiles this building that's a long a long journey in reality in the short term at least it's open again there's life soul back in the building, albeit these temporary openings at the moment or temporary functions in the rest of the building, but that's got to be better than an empty building that you know, where you get problems with like fires and vandalism, etc, 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 so we'll see, watch this space, isn't it?